All right, we're back on NASCAR 2009, just for the cup this time, Nazareth. Like I said, this is a track that I tend to like in most NASCAR games, but uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I got a feeling it's going to be kind of botched in 2009. All right, I'm debating whether or not I want to qualify for this. Uh, let's, let's qualify. Let, let's qualify, because... I have no idea what the difficulty difference is going to be at all um, between tracks. Like, I feel like some tracks are going to be stupidly easy, and then some tracks will be like Martinsville, where they were actually posing a bit of a threat uh, right up until they all died on the backstretch simultaneously. That was an unfortunate occurrence, but... Uh, I do find it interesting that this game has the exact same engine sounds from uh, NASCAR 2005. And boy oh boy, does this track not drive anything like the old EA games. Yeah, that track in 2000, or that corner right there, you would have had to break hard for in uh, 2005. Yeah, these physics, man, I just, I don't know. I don't want to make every part of this video just continually rambling about how terrible these physics are, but uh, it's just really not fun to drive. <laughs> uh, we, didn't, we didn't even qualify that well. Uh, yeah, we wound up 14th, which is not that great. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee while this loads in. Okay, well... I think lowering the resolution has helped my frame rate issues slightly, uh, but not entirely. Because you'll probably notice a stark difference here. Um, the, the last video, the, I had the graphics quality set to about NASCAR Heat 4 levels. Uh, now we're just kind of back to the, the base PS2 resolution. And, uh, that's where we're at. Boy, this coffee, I'm, I'm drinking it, and, uh, don't ask how I'm drinking it and driving, but, uh, I'm drinking it. It's not very good. I tell you, I had, uh, I had Dunkin' Donuts the other day for the first time in, like, a really long time. I, when it comes to, like, fast food coffee and, and, and things like that, I've been kind of, uh, sticking to McDonald's coffee just because I'm kind of addicted to their, uh, mocha frappes. But I was at a mall, and they had a Dunkin' in there. I'm like, yeah, I can go for a Dunkin' coffee. And so I got their uh, mocha cappuccino, and oh, man, it was good. It was good. I, I, I do like Dunkin'. Their cups kind of suck. Uh, they had to double They had to double cup my drink because it was hot. But I remember the last time before that that I went to Dunkin', uh... We're about to be three wide. The lid just continually leaked. Uh, it was on there. It was sealed. There was nothing more that I could have done. And it just, every time I took a sip, it was just leaking. Like, the seal wasn't tight. And from what I've heard, that is not a, a, a uncommon occurrence. That's something that happens a lot, apparently, according to the, uh, the internet. And as we all know, the internet never lies. So, I don't know what's with Duncan having really bad cup quality. You would think when their primary product is something that you serve in a cup, that they would have cups that actually function as a cup. I mean, it's not like cups are a, a difficult concept to to grasp, you know? It's not like... I think we've been putting liquids into containers for the purpose of consumption for about 8,000 years now. But, uh... I mean... Their coffee is so good, I, I, I just, I don't even care, honestly. I don't know where I would rank the fast food coffees. I, I, I don't know how I would rank those. I think, um, I think I would have to put McDonald's somewhere towards the top. Like, I'm, I'm gonna say McDonald's is A tier. Maybe not S tier, but it's A tier. Solely because of their mocha frappe. 
if you, if you like coffee or like flavored coffee, basically drinks that aren't actually really coffee. I mean, I like all kinds of coffee. I like black coffee, flavored coffee. But if you like that kind of drink, uh, if you've not had their mocha frappe, you are missing out. Oh my god! Um, but they got all kinds of good drinks. I like their their uh, French vanilla coffee. Um, their iced coffee is pretty good. Their hot coffee is pretty good. Even McDonald's just regular black coffee uh, is really good. I mean, so it's definitely a tier. Duncan, I'd put him on a similar level. I mean, you know. Like, beneath McDonald's, I think, but still firmly in A tier. Burger King, uh, that that's right down into F tier, because they don't even really, uh, they don't even really do coffee, per se. Like, you can order coffee, and I think you can get, like, cream or sugar if you want. I always just get it black. Um, like, if I'm not ordering some like, girly flavored drink. If I'm just getting regular coffee, I'm just gonna get a black, like, I'm not gonna do the, the cream and sugar or anything. But you can get it at Burger King. Um, but that's all they do. They don't do anything like the mochas or the frappes or the cappuccinos or the lattes or anything like that. Uh, they, they pretty much just have standard coffee. And even their standard coffee is not good. Like, I would sooner just make Maxwell House at home before I leave the house before I got Burger King coffee. Shout out to Maxwell House. They don't sponsor me. I just really like them. I do like me some Maxwell House. So this has been uh, an interesting race. I almost just hit the wall. Wow. I got so bored that I forgot what I was doing. Um, we worked our way up from like 14th up to the lead. And the AI have not been able to challenge for it yet. So that's something. That is something indeed. I can't wait to get out of the Modified series. I think, even though this game kind of sucks, I, I still think... Uh, I still think the truck and Bush and Cup Series are going to be better than the Modifieds. Because even in NASCAR 2005, the Modifieds weren't all that fun. I mean, they, they handled really well, and that was neat. But outside of the uh, the excessively good handling, the AI weren't very challenging. Uh, didn't go to too many tracks. Nazareth was like the best track you went to there. A license challenge has become available to you. You need to complete this in order to progress through... Okay, so I can get a license test. We can move on. Is what I'm hearing. License challenges. Okay, it's in my driver. And we can take the Stage 1 Craftsman Truck Series. $10,000 trial fee. Jeez, oh man. Alright. Target lap time. 55 seconds. Let's see about it. I would assume all we need to do to get this 55 second time is just hug the bottom, but, you know, I could be wrong. Wow, that is a field of view, isn't it? Jeez, oh man, I feel like that is way zoomed in. And there's a bar right in front of my face, jeez. Are we actually not going to get the... Okay, no, we're going to get it. Alright, well that was uh, incredibly boring. Now, good old Levi Strauss. This was a track that the AI were actually pretty fast at uh, in certain, certain older EA games, especially 2005. The AI were really fast here. I'm going to qualify. I don't know. I feel like... Not qualifying would make things more interesting, but at the same time, I just I don't know this game well enough to be able to trust that I'm actually going to be competitive 
And the qualifying itself seems pretty inconsistent. Like, Nazareth, I qualified 14th, uh, despite being, like, on the bottom wide open the whole time. So, I, I don't really know what to expect yet. So, we're just going to qualify. We'll, we'll do it the right way, and if it makes us OP, then it makes us OP. Um... Really, I, I just I want to get out of this modified series as fast as I can. They have changed the scenery here at Levi Strauss. Holy crap. This is new. So, it used to be all, like, woods and mountains and wilderness, and now there's a giant city outside of the track that I don't think was there in NASCAR 2005. So that's something. I wonder if the lore of this is like... You know what, yeah, let, let's, let's put in some headcanon here, right? Uh... So head cannon time. Oh god. They put in Levi Strauss, and it was sponsored by the Levi Strauss. And the races were so action packed and put on such a uh, a good show in the golden era of NASCAR, the the, the most popular era back in like two thousand four, two thousand five. That uh, it brought in so much money. That they were able to erect this massive city outside of the track. And it was all thanks to Levi Strauss Speedway. But then, Levi Strauss pulled his funding. Because he didn't agree with the, uh, the urban lifestyle that that city promoted. So he pulled his name off the track. He renamed it to Blue Ridge. Or whatever it is now. And, and that's what happened. I don't think Levi Strauss was alive in 2005, so our head game <laughs> doesn't make much sense. Hey Siri, when did Levi Strauss die? Yeah, he, he died in uh, 1853. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, I like to think that the Levi Strauss that sponsored the track in our head cannon was like, uh, Levi was actually a time traveler. You know, time is not linear for Levi Strauss. Like, he, he, he died in 1853, but that was not a linear thing for him. Like, his 1853 was well after our 2005, and that's how he sponsored this track. Oh boy, this is, uh... I kind of want to, I want to hack, like, a free cam, if I can, and sort of, like, see what that city actually looks like. Because it looks really pretty as, like, a backdrop, but I wonder how much of it is actually modeled. Also, when I grabbed my phone, did I look at, oh god, yeah. The, the battery on my phone is, is so bad. Like, ah, it's garbage. I need a new phone. I really do. This iPhone SE is about, I've had it for about two years. And the battery's been getting bad for like the last year. I've been looking at new phones. I don't know what I want to do. At first, I thought for sure that I was going to upgrade to the new SE2. But then I was like, well, I can get an XR cheaper, and it's actually a slight, like, it's actually slightly better in terms of hardware, and it's bigger, too. I like slightly bigger phones, uh, you know, so I'm like, I don't know. But then I found out about OnePlus. I was looking at some of them OnePlus phones, like the OnePlus 8. Uh, I can get that phone for, like, 600 bucks, which isn't bad at all. Um, I, I could buy that right now outright. And it's an Android device, obviously. Uh, and I, I've been tempted. I kind of have been wanting to go back to uh, to Android. Uh, I, I, my first, like, decent smartphone was an Android. Oh, we got a fight. Oh, this dude wants to fight me. Come at me, bro. Come at me. Bet you won't. Bet you won't. Yeah, stay back. Anyway, my first real decent smartphone was an Android. Then I switched to iPhone just to see what it was like and experience it. 
I don't, I don't hate I don't hate iPhones. They, they're you know they're iPhones. They got a lot of restrictions that Android doesn't have, but at the same time they're fairly user friendly and easy to figure out. So that's kind of a nice little little bonus you get there. All right, boys, here we go. I am glad that turning down my resolution did mostly resolve my lag issues. So, oh, oh, wow, holy crap. There is a turn that we have to actually break for. <sighs> You actually have to drive the car on this track. <laughs> oh my god. You know, I, I really don't like the, the way that they've changed the coloration and the lighting at this track in this game. Uh, it really seems like it's a little bit darker, not as vibrant. Like, the grass is, like, this brownish hue instead of being really bright green. I don't know, it just doesn't seem as bright and upbeat as it was in, like, the, uh... The 2005 game. But I do love this track. Old Spice Speedway is one of my favorite fantasy tracks ever. Like, it is so cool. I like the simple layout. I like how it's a homage to Riverside. Oh god, I slowed down way too much. That's gonna be bad. It's gonna be a really bad qualifying effort, I think. Never mind, we're on the pole. Nope, fourth. Okay, close enough. If only the AI could be as fast as they are in qualifying during the race, that would be... That would be nice, you know? So that I'm not able to just yeet past them. Why am I lagging so bad? Jeez, oh man. It seems like the emulator does not like the start of races, for some reason. The frame rate really kind of tanks at the start of the race, and then it slowly builds its way up to, to being decent. I don't know if the processor just isn't, like, kicked on full bore. It probably doesn't even make any sense. I don't know. So the AI are actually pretty fast here. This is, uh, this is interesting. We're gonna have to outbreak this guy. Send it into the corner. Get underneath this one. What a move. Okay, I think it's just the, the front stretch of this track that the emulator does not like. Eight laps here. We ran eight laps at Red Bull with 13 second laps. And now we're doing eight laps at a 45. What are these race distances? None of them make sense to me. Like, this may well be the longest race of the season. Luckily, these straightaways give me time to drink my coffee while I drive. You're really pulling away from the pack. See if you can lap a car. Yes, let me lap a car on this <laughs> one and a half mile road course with seven laps remaining. <laughs> or six laps remaining. You won't, mate. Oh, this game has rewinds, by the way. I don't think I ever mentioned that in any of these parts, but, uh... Rewinds, sort of like the Codemasters games. I never liked rewinds. I don't use them in any racing game. I don't understand, like... To me... Once you're really good at a racing game, the only thing that makes... 
the, the, the gameplay really interesting is that risk factor, right? Like, you play a racing game, especially one that has, like, a, a full season of races where your points carry over and everything's connected, you have to do consistently well. And so, if you were to wreck out and totally destroy your car and have a really bad race where you DNF to finish last, that's detrimental. And so, you're thinking about that when you're driving the car, like, you don't want to make super risky moves or anything like that. Um, and then if that does happen, there's consequences, and that makes it interesting. When you have rewinds, and you can just do something over and over again, and, and like, quell yourself of any, oh, we're gonna lap this guy, he's dead. I'm having chest pain! He is dead, Jim. Oh my god, he just he's just stopping on the track. This man is having a heart attack. He's still... There's there's several cars back there. They're piling up on the backstretch. Look at the mini-map. What is this? Oh man, I hope they're still there when I get back there. I want to see what's going on. Looks like the cars that got tangled up with him are fine now, but he's still just sitting there. He's like Big Yoshi, dude. He's just sitting there. Stop! Stop! <laughs> he didn't even... <laughs> he didn't even make it to the pits! Oh my god. Oh, now he's coming out the other side. He, wait, no, that's a different guy. <laughs> what is going on? The AI in this game are so... I, I, I don't even know what to call them. I, I don't even... All right, we're coming to the final lap here. All right. <coughs> uh, we are still undefeated. Now, I don't normally celebrate, but I do have a tradition when I win at Old Spice Speedway. And that is that I do a burnout across the bridge. You can't even do a burnout. There we go. And then after that, I go down to the uh, the hotel. At least I assume that's what that is up in the corner here. And I do some burnouts in the uh, little runoff area here. Some very upbeat music we got going on. I can't even do burnouts. What on earth? Can I do some burnouts, please? These physics do not let you do burnouts. What is the point of this? I, I just kind of feel like an idiot now. Like, I come down to the corner and I'm just driving around recklessly like a... Like a salmon who's just gained the ability to drive for the first time. And now everybody's looking at me like I'm, like I'm stupid, you know? I mean, that's how they look at me normally. But this time it's different, you know? Yeah, come at me, bro. Bet you won't. I bet you won't. Come on.